Pescott got involved a little bit more in the passing game this past week and got another touchdown. I think he's matched the touchdown total from last season. I know it's been a big point of, of emphasis, you know, during the preseason to kind of make him more of a more of a receiving threat. So just kind of looking back on the first half, how would you how would you assess the progress of Jake and, and maybe the rest of your tight ends? I think Jake is growing at a good rate. Um, I think, you know, we've put a lot on him. Uh, we've talked about it before, put a lot on him this offseason. I think spring missing that part of it was huge. Uh, just in the plans we had in terms of continuing to develop him as a as a receiver. He's done a really good job. We've been able to play in a lot more 11 personnel. Uh, whether the ball's gone to him or not, he has been in positions to make plays. Uh, we've got obviously a bunch of guys that can go make plays with the ball. Uh, when it's been specifically designed to go to him, he's made every play we've asked him to make. When it's been um, with him as a secondary or third option, he's been able to make plays with the ball. So I'm proud of where he is. I think he's got to continue to keep growing, keep developing um, in terms of just being able to win in one-on-one -on -one matchups. The, the way we play on offense, you end up creating a lot of one-on-one -on -one matchups. And like I said, there's so much skill out there that at times it's like, man, is he is he the winner in the one-on-one -on -one matchup or, or are you gonna go to Marlon one more time? And obviously Marlon's proven that that he can go get it and Flash and Ryan and Jay Harris and Stretch and all these guys. So I think what he's done better than anything is accepted his role in terms of what we're asking him to do. He's done an incredible job within his role. He's been challenged in a big way the last two weeks for us to run the ball better. Um, he stepped up in that way a week ago in a big way. And and he's got to continue to do the dirty work and the reward of the catches will come. Um, it, it's come at critical times. At ECU, it came at a critical time last week. And I think it's going to continue to come as long as he keeps developing and, and keeps proving to us that, that he can go make those plays. But I'm really proud of where he is and, and how he's progressed up, to, up until this point. Alex, when we talked to Jake yesterday, he, he mentioned the fact that he kind of has had to grow into this leadership role in that tight end room. And he talked about how he's reached out to Michael Tubieri, the former tight end, to kind of get his thoughts on being a leader. What have you seen in that role, him growing into maybe a larger role with those younger tight ends? Sure. I, really, I challenge him to be a leader on offense. You know, you look around, you look around that our, our core group of 18 to 20 guys that play a bunch on offense. Um, I've challenged him to to hold everybody accountable, and and it's the same. You know, you got a young quarterback, and I know Dylan has done some incredible things. He's still young in terms of a leadership role. Um, we've really challenged all the older guys. Jake's played a ton of football. Marlon's played a ton of football. Jacob Harris has played a ton of football. There's a handful of guys on the O line that have played a ton. We we've challenged that, those guys to be more vocal. You know, our job is so unique in in terms of how we play. And the expectations are so high in terms of how we play and, and what's been able to be done here over the last couple of years in terms of offensively. I just keep challenging him to not get complacent and, and continue to bring other guys along with him. You know, we, we've got Alec Holler, who's played a huge role the last couple of weeks and has continued to step up and, and played 30 some snaps last week for us in, in big minutes. Challenging him to bring Zach March Wojan along, challenging him to, to hold Ryan O'Keefe and Amari Johnson and these young receivers, hold those guys accountable. Uh, there's so much that goes into playing for us on offense in terms of being able to get lined up and seeing a signal and, and playing as fast as we do. Help those young guys. You know, we, you, find, you look out there sometimes and there's a bunch of guys that, that are playing their fourth, fifth, sixth game of, of actual real minutes in a football game. Just hold everybody accountable. You know the standard that's been set here. I'm trying to develop him in terms of holding himself accountable in every aspect of his life. And he's had to grow up a ton. Um, he's here for a reason. He, this isn't where he started out. He's accepted that. And, and he's had to continue to grow within his own path. And now that he's grown up and realized what's right, how do I hold myself accountable? How do I live life every day? Um, how do I win off the field? And now pass those lessons on because there are a bunch of young guys that are going through a bunch of things that come from all sorts of different backgrounds. Be, be an ear, be a guiding source for those guys and continue to challenge him in that way. Continue to challenge Cole Schneider, continue to challenge Sam Jackson. Um, these guys that have played a ton of football here and honestly continue to help Dylan Gabriel come along. He's got all this spotlight on him. Still a 20 year old young man that that's going through life. That's 3000 miles away from home. Be there for him. Um, so uh, some of it is cliche. Some of it is, is real life, but, but these guys are living in a unique world right now where they're around each other a lot more with so many online classes uh, continue to be a guiding source for those guys. 
Hey, Coach. Um, Jake Huskock seems to be a pretty high-energy guy. Um, he's really close with Dylan. Dylan mentioned that they went on a fishing trip um, a couple years ago, or not too long ago. Um, how important is it having someone like Jake and his personality inside that locker room? Yeah, I think Jake manages to keep it light. I'm high-strung sometimes. Um, uh, <clears throat> there's a handful of guys maybe on our coaching staff strong um jake kind of keeps it light every time you look at jake you kind of you kind of help can't help but smile i think jake has grown to appreciate these opportunities i think part of growing up he's realizing his football life is coming to a to a end here at some point i think when you're young you think man i'm just gonna keep playing forever um i think he started to realize my football life is coming to an end i'm gonna enjoy every moment like you'll rarely see jake not smiling, not happy, not dapping up a teammate, not cracking a joke. And those guys are super important to have, especially when you're you're fighting some adversity. And we've hit some adversity throughout the season. Jake's kind of been that that constant, um, constant um, sense of humor guy in that locker room, in our offensive huddle. Um, he's kind of just that. Every time I get high strung, like, hey, coach, I got you. We're good, man. We're good. And uh, he'll kind of laugh it off. So he's kind of, he's been that, he's that for Dylan at times, you know, Dylan's so locked in and, and wired tight too, that Jake can be that for him. Um, that's probably what you appreciate more than anything. I think you can't do that until you're truly confident in what you're doing. Um, and Jake is confident, confident in the offense, confident in, in the scheme um, that now he can sit back, enjoy it and, and, do it with a smile on his face. He's, like I said, starting to realize that the amount of games he's got left are, are starting to narrow down. And I think he's enjoying every moment of it. Hey, Alex, we were just talking with Cole. He mentioned something that the offensive line wants to work on is just uh, is, a, is allow the running backs to have more success. We saw Greg McCray run a bit more against uh, Tulane this past week and maybe more conscientious effort to make him run more early on. Is the offense as balanced as you want it to be? And what do you think needs to change maybe to get the running game a bit more, uh, you know, successful early on, I guess? Sure. I, I think what we do offensively um, sets up for us to be able to, to take what they give us and, and take advantage of it. Uh, I think people, as they scheme what we do, understand that, that running the ball is critically important to us. We spend a lot of time on it. We got a really good stable of backs. Uh, the challenge has been to do it better. Um, I think if if you're going to sit back and throw the ball every snap, I think that becomes a really really lonely world for that old line. Uh, allows defenses to tee off on you and uh, apply pressure more so than you would like. Staying balanced allows you to to keep defenses on their toes. Uh, everything starts with the run game for us. I know the that's not like the super sexiest thing to write about in the media, but, but it starts with the running game for us. We take a lot of pride in it. I think it's easier as an O line. If you can get going in the run game, then, then the pass rush doesn't seem as fast as you keep going within a game. Um, but I think at the same time, the way we play with tempo, um, as you wear defenses down the run game, the run game comes a little bit easier. Um, We've had a huge emphasis on it. We went into last week saying that that we've got to attack this run game, and numbers necessarily don't don't say that. Maybe at times, but being able to be in second and six rather than second and ten certainly makes it easier. So there's been a huge emphasis on running the ball um, to be able to set up the pass as you go. But anytime you get a box that allows you to run the ball. We're going to run the ball. We got in a bunch of 12 personnel over the last couple of weeks to be able to help us set some edges and run the football. We're going to continue to do that when, when the opportunity presents itself. But, but running the football is where it all starts, offensive football. Uh, you've got to be able to, to run the ball effectively. And, and I feel like over the last couple of weeks, we've kind of come along with that. Uh, eliminating the pre-snap penalties has helped that. When you're in first and 15, it's really hard to run the football. Um, so the last couple of weeks, we've been able to stay on schedule and, and credit to the guys and credit to, to Dylan and Matt and getting through that part of it and showing incredible growth. Again, you get into first and 10, you're able to run the football. First and 15 makes it really, really difficult. So I'd say a combination of all of those things and emphasis, not getting the pre-snap penalties, Jason, and, and being able to continue to stay on schedule offensively. Coach, you've got a bye week next week. If this was a normal season, I'm sure you'd go out on the road recruiting, you know, visit some schools and whatnot. You know, it, 
in such a, you know, with all the restrictions in place, what is a, a what is recruiting like during the season now? Is, is it just kind of how it was during the summer? I mean, how, how is it different? I think right now it feels like it's, it's like it's always been during the season. You, you try to make two phone calls on your way home and catch up with guys. You check the scores on Saturday morning and see how the guys did the night before. Um, the biggest change has been this bye week is, is spending a bunch of time there getting on FaceTime and, and digging into maybe some new guys that, that are in their senior year, getting a new focus on the younger guys in our main areas here in Florida and Georgia and, and Alabama. And, and uh, with the exception of going on the road physically on the bye week, nothing has been different. Um, I think it'll really hit home where it's different in December, probably where you're used to sitting in living rooms and, and trying to convince guys that this is the place to go. But as of right now, it hasn't been a whole lot different. Spend, like I said, two phone calls at night on your way home, Wednesday night, try to make some calls and, uh, just continuing to to breed the relationships that have already been created. Alex, you got you now halfway through the season. It's, it's not been the your first year. You probably would have thought it would have been everything going on with COVID and everything. How would you assess how things have gone, and 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 what have you seen that's kind of stood out to you in your your first year here at UCF? Yeah, Matt, I, I think it's been a fascinating um, eight months uh, for me personally. Just getting the family here and, and them not being as involved as, as I know that families generally have been with Hype um, in charge. Um, you know, you're so used to Thursday nights walking off the practice field, your kids are around and, and my kids have genuinely not met a single player on this team with the exception of standing outside the locker room and waving at guys uh, last week was the first time. That's been really unique that my family's cheering and rooting and pouring their hearts out for a team that they've never met any of the players on the team uh, because of the way the timing worked. They didn't get here till March. I think that's probably the hardest thing um, that that I've got some diehard night fans at home that have never met anybody uh, uh, associated with the program. Um, that would be probably the most unique part of um, of this whole thing. In terms of for me, from a from a football side, it's been an incredible journey. You know, I, I think coming in and the expectations being so high, I'm in the back of my mind knowing that that at some point adversity would come, and trying to prepare these guys to face that adversity, and then adversity does come, and watching how our guys navigate through it and continuing to fight through it, that was my biggest question mark going in is. How will how will it be when when it doesn't it doesn't go your way um, that Tulsa game adversity hit you know and and there have been adversity after adversity after adversity with with COVID and then camp starting and and then pushing it and then you know all these things that are just so new for these for these young men that they got to handle these are eighteen to twenty two young guys eighteen to twenty two year old young guys that that are going through this for the first time as well. I'm 36 going through through it for the first time as well. So it's been an incredible journey. It's been incredible to try to help guide these guys through those adverse moments and, and watching them grow. Um, I think offensively, it's been fascinating to see our guys come together through the adverse moments, really look each other in, in, in the eye and question what we're doing, how we're doing it and fighting through it. So for me, it's been, it's been an incredible learning experience, uh, been an incredible thing to watch. I think we've got some incredible young guys on this offensive side of the ball that that are continuing to come together and fight like crazy. So I'm excited for the next uh, four or five week journey here and, and continuing to pour into our process and continue to prepare. Uh, that's been the biggest thing for me is, is harping home that that the preparation is, is all part of the process. Whatever happens on Saturday is a result of your preparation. And, and I think these guys have really bought into it. Um, really, really proud of, of how we've come through some of these moments. That doesn't result in wins. It gives you a chance to win. Um, but I think just continuing to pour into our preparation and learning how to prepare uh, and learning that people are going to defend us different. That's been fascinating uh, on a football side. So it's been a challenge. It's been, a, it's been an incredible one. I've really enjoyed it. And we can continue to grow within this offense and continue to grow within the system and continue to try and find holes where I can help make us better. We're talking about the importance of the run game, and that's where it starts. And now you guys are going to face probably the best run defense in the conference in Houston this week. You saw they did really well against Navy last week. 
What do you expect them to present you guys? What's that challenge going to be like against that run defense this week? Yeah, they do a really, really good job. It all starts for them with stopping the run. Um, Joe is one of the better defensive coordinators that I have watched on film with how they handle it. Their defensive front is is physical and violent would be the two words I would use to describe them. Um, they're about as good of a defensive front as you'll face in this conference and um, size, athletic ability, physical. Uh, it's a huge challenge for us. Um, the, the linebacking core is really, really good, um, really physical. Again, downhill guys that, that their emphasis is to stop the run. Where, what makes them good is they can cover on the back end as well, which I think is why they've been such a complete defense this year so far. Um, it's a huge challenge for us. We've got to be physical up front. Uh, we've got to finish blocks. We've got to strain. And um, these guys know that. I thought last week going into Tulane, I thought that was a really physical front. Then you flip this film on, and, and these guys are, are – match it with physicality and then add size to it. So it's a huge challenge for us. I think huge challenge for our old line, huge challenge for our running backs, uh, but they do a really good job. They, they're they really sound in their scheme. There's nothing crazy there. And like you said, they, they were able to do a lot of really good things against Navy. And uh, when you can stop Navy's rush attack, I, I, you gotta be pretty good. So um, they've obviously recruited really well. There's some length. Um, it looks like it looks like as good of a physical sized unit as we'll play against. Uh, we've got to be able to run the ball because <clears throat> that's going to set everything up for us in the past game. And these guys know it. It's a huge challenge for us. Our old line's been challenged. Tight ends have been challenged. And um, if we don't answer the bell there, it's going to be a long day. Okay, thanks, Coach. We will wrap up there. Thanks, everybody, for being on. And we'll see you tomorrow with Coach Heupel. Thank you, Coach. Thanks, thanks Alex. Appreciate it.